we're getting into the upper woodland, which we kind of recently cleared. It's only been really like two years. And this is where we're having some challenges as to what we'll take because it's, it, is, it slopes, it's dry, this is north facing. Um, and then we get the western sun late in the day. Well, we've been playing with these daffodil flows, which are coming along a lot better than I anticipated. Um, and they look fantastic, and they, and they got different timing on them. And, you know, little by little, I'm like, well, that's something I can take. I know it's just going to be here for the first part of spring. Um, but this is when it's also more open in the woods. And I've been very, very pleased with these happy faces just flowing down the hill and you'll see several ones up here I've tried to make it look like almost like little streams of them so um, um, you know the awesome fragrance of Daphne's in winter I mean there are about probably about 80 Daphne's out here um, they do really well in here I'm hoping they're the ones that will fill in these very difficult spots I mean, right here there's three right in the shot yeah, see, four, one, right three, here. Three, four, yes, yeah, so five, six. Uh, seven to the right. Yeah, to the right. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We're just some of these are very young ones that were propagated for me off my original ones, which are in the lower garden. And but they've always done well, and it's a it's an interesting plant, certainly for what a lot of people consider an off season. Um, and my biggest hope is this north face over here where we probably put in about 30. Um, I've, that's probably been the most difficult space to get anything to grow. And I see lots of new green leaves, which makes me super happy. So I, if half of them make it, I will be happy. But at this point, it looks like all of them are gonna make it. I have serious Daphne envy. I, you know, I kill them in like 20 seconds. Yeah. Well, um, well, also, I, but I have to be prepared. They do that real spontaneous death thing sometimes. It's happened on about three of them. I look at it one day, um, going, man, that's amazing. We'll stroll three days later and go, what the F, you know? <laughs> um, haven't had it happen in a while, which, which is, I'm glad. I mean, I'd like to see mature shrubs, um, but it's you know, such as gardening. We'll see what happens. Um, I was saying, I was like, I happen to be a fan of azaleas, and it seems to be like a love-hate thing. Either you love them or you, or you don't. Um, I'm used to seeing them at, say, my grandparents' place, but there's so many cool varieties. And But I'll be honest with you, I haven't quite figured out what the key is, because sometimes I'm like, oh, that, that's going to be too dry, um, and or not enough sun, or that's going to be too shady. And the thing is, it seems to be almost unique to some of them, and I'm no expert. Like this one, I never knew thought would take here. I think this was actually a Walmart purchase by chance. And yes, one of my favorite uh, azaleas now. It's uh, uh, Azalea Kurumi Mildred. Um, I've even rooted it and gotten a, another plant off of it. And it just excites me every year. You can see it from the house without, without any obstruction at this time of year. And so I sort of have this crazy love affair with this thing so as all well-adjusted plant people would sure and it gives you a great display and especially as you see the mix of the colors and again coming back to fall this is kaleidoscopic i mean it's 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 got a big wow factor to it um, and it gives the property a, a little bit of an expansive feel you know this is only an acre you know it feels so much bigger than right. an acre. so it's a uh, maybe an attribute where at times I feel like it's working against me because like, oh, the water flows off and the native trees take everything. But when I can get something established, you know, you kind of get like a, maybe a small mountain feel, you know? I, well, it feels a whole lot like a mountain compared to my house <laughs> in right. the lowland swamps. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> You're at the very base and uh, I've gone up a little yeah. bit. <laughs> You're farther east than me, but I think you're higher elevation. Yeah, that's an interesting aspect, isn't it? Yeah, you think this would be just farmland, you know? Um, which I'm glad it's not. I'm glad it wasn't a clear-cut lot, and um, I'm glad I have the the woodland aspect. Is something reminds me of my childhood. So I always played out in the woods, even in the suburbs we were at. All the woods that kind of filled in the gaps. That was my playground. So I sort of recreated it with maybe a little more aesthetic element now. 
So. And a collector's charm. Uh, sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. This is not nature. You have to give yourself credit for that. Oh, yes. I mean, I do. I will pat myself on the back for the work I did. But um, I like the randomness of it because Mother Nature does kind of do that. You know, I didn't want a monoculture of anything, you know. Um, you have such an incredible plant collection. I mean... It's just, it's mind boggling. I need to come over more regularly to do these tours so people can see how it changes. It would be nice. We, that's one of the dilemmas we have, if it's a dilemma, where we'd be like, when's the perfect time for a tour? I was like, you quite literally would probably need to come, well, really every day, but <laughs> each week because there's always this turnover and something changing as one thing fades, another thing comes up. And, you know, the lucky thing is it's mine. So I get it all the time. You know, I stroll this every day. Um, but to, when you want to show somebody, it's just, when is the perfect time? And, but you also don't know what people look for, you know? Um, the perfect time is when they're standing in front of you. That, you're right. right. That's a good way of putting it. <laughs> yes. So, so we were just admiring the native dogwoods, uh -huh. but look what's blooming right in front oh, of us. Oh, yeah. And this one, I know it smells. Oh, yeah. That's sugar sweet. I oh. mean... I mean, this is the native Calicanthus florida. Yes. This is, you know, there's a lot of good cultivated varieties, but I still think it can't beat the space species. No, especially for the scent. I mean, this reminds me of my grandmother's house. You know, it's, um, you know, I know it can be a little leggy, but, you know, placed right, you know, like, yes. And it's blooming the first week of April. Yes. And there are several of these scattered throughout, and it just, you can be wandering and go, and next thing you know, it's in the air, like, what is that? What is that? Well, you know what it is before long. Um, these are actually rescues from Aaron's place. From Weston Farms. Yes. Um, she was going to clear the land to put more magnolias in and invited us to come pick a few things. And I found a bunch of little tiny um, ukigomos up under, um, I think it was that, some type of vine. Is it silver? berry or something like that or oh, china berry something and i was like oh my god these are ukigomos and so these started pretty small and they've all taken growing well and again my thought was literally creating the floating cloud effect when we're below it you'll see them kind of staggered up the hill we'll see what happens and you've got trillium underneath yes um this is kind of a little i guess kind of like a Spring ephemeral garden with the exception of it's such a beautiful plant. And there's my little Tudor baby from here. Now it struggles, but it's blooming. Oh, nice! Oh, that's Tudor, var Tudor baby variegated. Yeah. One of my favorite viral induced variegations. Well, it's finally it's the second season blooming, so I'm like, okay, maybe it's really starting to get established. <laughs> um, I don't want to drop some soil cube on it, maybe. Yes. Because I imagine things like this take a lot of a lot of the nutrients. Native Ilex opaca. Uh -huh, yeah. And certainly these Vaccinium arboreums, I believe. Look at your Akabono. Oh, yeah. I'm, this is, uh, I'm proud of this. It's, um, I mean, I've been told it's not, say, very easy here as compared to the other uh, Edgeworthia. But um, a local nursery got it years ago. I think they got three in, and I was like, I'll be right there. And unfortunately, our first orange kitty had passed away, and he is buried under there. And I figure his orange might, his spirit might feed this tree. That's all superstition, I know. But the plant has taken and done really well here. And um, you can see it's become pretty impressive. Buddy. Nelson. Big stretch. Hey, bud. You know Bree. I know, but you love Daddy. Hey, bud. <laughs> Look at the pollen. I know. Hi, sweetness. Hi. You know that I love you. There's a few blooms left. Interesting how they how they hang. Look like little peppermint candies almost. And it's finally starting to take off, you know. Uh, you have a really vast plant palette. Yeah, it's um, it allows the collection to be varied in a, a lot of ways and and fairly expansive. Yeah. So.
So stay tuned for the part two of the Sabio's incredible garden tour, everybody. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this life-changing tour. I hope you did too. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs>